So I have two vacuums here. I'm going to compare it on some protein powder and on some popcorn to see which one sucks up better on the hardwood floors. Both of them are going to be on maximum power. Look at that. Both of them basically sucked up everything in its path. As you saw here, both of these vacuums did a fantastic job all the way up there. And on the bigger pieces, like every single uh, cordless vacuum, they have a tougher job picking up the much bigger pieces. So that's what, what you're left up with. All you got to do is basically lift your vacuum up and put it on top of the bigger pieces and it'll suck right on up. But yeah, for the hardwood floor, as you can see, it did a fantastic job of sucking up every single thing. So as you saw, both sides did a fantastic job. This is the middle where none of the vacuums went over. And as you can see, both sides look pretty good. But I will say though, uh, this side with the tin coat looks a lot cleaner than this side. I think this side, the vacuum went over this part, but there's still a little bit of um, some protein powder here. And if we move up a little bit, as you can tell, this is where all uh, the tin coat went through. There's not a single piece of popcorn, but for this, there is a little bit of pieces of popcorn left. So I guess I would say in terms of cleaning power and suction power, I think the Tinko definitely wins this on the carpet for sure. And especially both vacuum cleaners, as we saw in the hardwood floor test, they did not do an amazing job picking up the bigger pieces. But because the carpet here has like little ridges, it has room for the popcorn to go under the um vacuum and to be sucked up. So now I can compare the noise level of these two vacuum cleaners. This is the mic. I'll turn on, on to the low mode on the Kenmore. This is the noise level. This is the high. So for the tin cone now. This is the low. And this is the max. So now to go over the accessories, these are the accessories for the Kenmore and that is for the Tenko. And as you would expect, because this is our, the pricier side, the accessories are much more premium on them. Basically how you put on the accessories is kind of just, you just slot in here into this here. You just push it down and that is it. That's all you have, especially right here. That is all you get. So, so it does feel a lot cheaper. There is not a snug fit. The suction is not definitely uh, not as secure. Whereas on the Tenko, it feels a lot more premium. And as you can hear, there is a click, meaning that the suction is super uh, dialed in. And in terms of the dusting, this one has longer bristles. That means it's going to pick up dust a lot easier. And the hole is a lot larger too. While this one, uh, the bristles bristles are shorter, it is tougher, and the hole is a lot smaller. This is the second accessory, basically the same thing, but just, um, just a plastic kind of stick. Well, the other accessory for this is quite incredible. This thing, because of the way it is built, the plastic right here, this actually has more suction than any of the accessories right here, even including the full size thing. This thing has more suction than this thing. I could demonstrate it by pushing it in. This thing. It is so difficult to take off with the hard surface because the, the suction is insane. The next thing is the charging cable. This is the charging cable. This is the block for the tin coat. How you charge it is basically you plug it into the side right here. This is the charging cable for the Kenmore. As you can see, you can click down here and kind of remove this to add on different accessories, I guess. It's also a barrel charge, but you can't plug it in anywhere to the actual thing. The only way to charge this is kind of um, complicated. So what it is essentially, this is the dock for the Kenmore vacuum. You have to put this down into the dock and this is how you can charge this thing. This is the only thing you can charge it with. So what you do is plug in the cable into here and you see the metal tabs in there. You gotta line it up so the metal tab hits it with this. You slot it up and this is how it charges. You cannot charge it any other way. And as you notice, that's not the biggest difference. The biggest difference between these two vacuums is the handle. This handle 
is nothing on here and the actual vacuum is right down here whereas the actual vacuum is all the way up here so when you are vacuuming it this does feel uh, exceptionally much lighter than this one because a lot of the weight is distributed at the bottom side of the vacuum and it's also a lot more maneuverable on the top side too because it is bottom heavy but to compare both of the heads as you can see these two are very very different First of all, because this is the head, regardless of it on or off, this still has two power settings, whereas this one only has the one power setting because how it controlled this power before was using this, but without that, this only has the one power by clicking onto here. And it is the max power. What they share in similarities is that they're both of the battery in here, it is non-removable. Also, emptying the dustbin is a lot different too. This one has a one button, you click it, it pops on out and you just shake it off like that. The filter is in here, you gotta twist it and it comes on out. You put it back in and you twist it like that, click on here, and the air filter is right up here. It is removable, super easy. Whereas the Kenmore is a little bit complicated, you press the top one right here, it kind of dejects all of it right here, and you gotta take this thing out and that's when you can, you stick this back in and you can't actually access the air filter in here because it's all up in here. So you can't really replace it. You gotta be careful with this one because I've accidentally pressed this instead of the power button. And when you press this, this whole thing falls apart. If there is dust in here, it is just gonna go onto the floor. So you gotta be careful of these. And as for actually vacuuming with the tin coat, as you can see, the light is quite bright. So you can see a lot of the debris that is uh, on the side of your path. And because of the huge wheels, the movement and flexibility of this is quite large. Whereas with the Kenmore, it does have the light, but as you can see, it is not as bright at all. It is basically like a faint glimmer. And it, you also, if the light is here, but the actual light comes on right here, so you can't see the uh, section of light right here, which is the disadvantage. And also the wheel underneath is much smaller, so you're gonna have a little bit of harder uh, time moving this one. But it does have a great feature right here where it basically uh, the symbol says cut basically any hair tangles in here. You press on this, it kind of cuts all the hair in there. So it's kind of like a manual detangler, which is very nice. And one other feature is that because this thing has a clicking, as you can hear, it clicked just right now. So it clicks in place so it can stand right up straight. The Tenko vacuum is not able to do this. So this is a unique feature. And last but not least, the Tenko, although a lot of the weight is on top, overall, it is much lighter than the Tenko. A lot of the weight is on the bottom, but I'm making it lugging it up the stairs, which I have stairs is a lot harder because this is heavier. So overall, even though Tenko costs a bit more, I would say the value is substantial because of the increased suction power, the increased uh, better accessories, much much easier to charge the Tenko also, and also better lighting on the vacuum heads and also the bigger head on the Tenko. Overall, the Tenko, I think personally is the better package. So if you were to choose between the two, definitely would go with the Tenko right here.